Hello, everyone. This is Zena with the Nonprofit Support Network. We are an agency dedicated to helping the small startup nonprofit organization. We provide support to entrepreneurs who have dreamed of starting a nonprofit, turn it into reality by offering a step-by-step -step guide and instructions on how to launch, run, and grow a successful nonprofit organization. Today, we're going to talk about setting up the board and hosting your first board meeting. Today's training will review the following, identifying and meeting potential candidates, the vision for your nonprofit, electing temporary directors, adopting and recording your articles of incorporation, adopting your bylaws, appointing board members and officers, designating your principal offices, authorizing bank accounts, authorizing your application for tax exemption, and authorizing other filings. Typically, forming the nonprofit. Typically, this is done in one of two ways. Normally, an individual will do some work in the community and then decide to formalize what he's doing by forming a nonprofit. He'll go ahead and get his articles of incorporation, the EIN number, and maybe do a couple of other steps and then get his board and host the first meeting. The other way is when a group comes together and decides to form a nonprofit organization. So they'll come together as the board and then decide on the name of the organization, <clears throat> decide what the organization is going to do, and then compose the paperwork to formalize the organization. So either way is acceptable, and we're going to go into some more details about how to document the forming of those organizations. Preparing for the first meeting. So first you want to identify who you want on your board. Think about what professions match what your organization is going to be doing. For instance, if you're going to do some medical work, something in the medical field, um, maybe you have services in the community um, for low-income people. Um, maybe you have a home for a uh, hospice. So if you're doing anything in the medical field, you may want to look at having a doctor on your board or having a hospital administrator on your board. If you are doing something in the housing market, maybe you want to provide housing for low-income people, then you would think about having someone from the real estate field on your board. If you're doing something legal where you're helping the minority or low-income community with application assistance for free, for instance, for immigration paperwork, then you may want to think about having an attorney on your board. All organizations can benefit from having an attorney on their board, and they can also benefit from having someone in the accounting profession on their board. So you want to think about how many board members you want to have and what their professions are. Another good source for board members, who are your mentors? Who do you look up to in the business field? Who has been helping you? Who has been providing you with support? Those individuals will make great board members. And then also, if you've been working in the community doing this work, who's been providing you with assistance? Who's ever been volunteering to help you out? That person would also make a good board member. The next thing you want to do is set your expectations early. So when you talk to these individuals about being a member of your board, let them know that you expect for them to give. Board members must financially donate to your organization. It's not enough just to volunteer. They also need to give, whether they're giving monthly, quarterly, or annually. However the board decides, they must Give. They must volunteer also, but they must give. So if you have someone that just wants to volunteer, you may not want to have that person on your board. Now, of course, you still want to have them volunteer. All help is wanted and needed, 
but that person may just not make a great board member. Next, you want to review the plan of your nonprofit. You want to introduce these new people to your vision. Let them know what you see your organization doing in the next three to five years. Are you are your programs for homeless people? Are your programs for children? Are your programs for minority members? What type of programs do you want to run? Do you want to provide firsthand hands-on assistance? Do you want to be the middle person that garners the support for the community? Let them know exactly what you want to do. You do not have to have a formal business plan at this point. A part of the board's job is to help you come up with the business plan. For nonprofits, typically we use a strategic plan, but the board will help you formulate the plan for your organization. And this document will set the direction for your organization. It is your job at this point to give them a general idea of your vision for the organization and inspire their commitment. Next, you will elect okay. temporary directors. So at this time, the founder must step down as the sole incorporator and hand over the meeting to a temporary share and a temporary secretary. These two must be elected at this time to run the rest of the meeting. These are required roles to continue the meeting. In some cases, the founder will be elected as a temporary chair, that can happen, or it can be someone else. But all this has to be documented in your paperwork. We do have a part two to this training that will teach you how to complete all the paperwork that goes with this part one training. Next, you will adopt and record the articles of incorporation. The board must approve the finalized articles. So if the founder has already submitted and received the articles back for the organization, then the board will have to adopt and approve and accept this these articles as the official articles of the organization. Anything that the founder has done prior to this meeting, it must be adopted and officially accepted as the documents of the organization. So that has to be done and properly recorded in your paperwork. Next, you will adopt the bylaws. Sometimes the founder will have this, the bylaws composed, but if not, he can hand them out at this time where the board can review them and then vote on it at the next meeting. If he has them and the board has time to read through everything and approve everything and decide on all the items in the bylaws, then they can go ahead and vote and approve the bylaws at this time. Next, you will officially appoint your board members and officers. So we have a temporary chair and a temporary secretary to run the rest of this meeting. But at this time, you will on the board members for their terms. Maybe your term is one year or two years, and then you will also vote on the official officers. So at this point, your board members can determine if they want to accept their position as a board member for your organization. They can complete their board commitment forms or their board member applications to make it official. And then they will vote on the officers of the organization. So the officers will be the president or the CEO, chief executive officer. Also the treasurer or the CFO chief financial officer, and then they will also vote on the secretary. And again, the board in the bylaws will determine the terms of these individuals. Next, you will designate your principal office. This is where the board officially confirms the location of the principal offices of the corporation. So you will, some boards will meet at individuals' homes 
Some boards will meet at various restaurants and other locations, or they can meet at the offices of the nonprofit. Wherever you decide to meet, that has to be documented. So you can say that we're going to meet at each board member's home on a quarterly basis, or you can say that we're going to meet at the office of the organization, which is located at 111 Main Street, Los Angeles, California. Whatever you decide, it must be documented. Next, you will authorize the bank account for the organization. Typically, the founder will have a list of banks, maybe three banks that they have researched and determined the amount that it takes to open and that the interest rates. So at this time, you guys can decide on which bank you want to go with. You can also decide on uh, how many signers, if there will be one person or two person and who that will be. Um, it can be the chair and the treasurer or just the chair. So all that information will be decided at this time and documented in your paperwork. Next, it's time to authorize your application for tax exemption. Again, sometimes the founder will have completed this already, so you will officially vote on accepting those documents. If the founder has not, if, it is, if this is a group coming together, then you will decide who completes the information, the form, and then decide what goes into the form. So this is for your federal tax exemption, which is for your 501c3 status. Next, you will authorize other filings. So this will be any other filing that the founder has done prior to your meeting. Everything that he has done for the organization has to be voted on and accepted as an official document for the organization. So this can include your federal tax exempt status, your state tax exempt status, your filing with the attorney general, the EIN, your bylaws, and any other items that the founder has previously completed. So that concludes part one of our training on setting up the board and hosting your first board meeting. We do have a part two training, which is a paid training that goes with this. This provides step-by-step -step instructions on completing the resolutions and minutes for your first meeting. So all the information that we just went over all of the paperwork for that is in this training. You will also learn common terms used in board meetings and their definitions. We'll also have information on how to transition from the sole proprietor, having them step down as the sole proprietor of the nonprofit. You will also receive sample resolutions and minutes. So this is complete training that goes with part one. Please visit our website, Network to access that training. We also have some trainings coming up on your bylaws and completing the 501c3. So we thank you for joining us. Please come back, leave your questions in the comments, and we will see you at the next training. Thank you.